Hi everybody. You know it's such a beautiful morning. I came out here to have coffee and I started reminiscing. Reminiscing on how I used to garden and how I could not stand gardening. The reason I didn't like gardening was dealing with all the hornworms, dealing with all the aphids, dealing with insects. And it was like a battle. I didn't want to garden and have to battle. And that was what it was. So it was an effort. It was a lot of work. It was me trying to make it right so I could grow something. And it just became too much. It was just too hard. And I was watching videos and learning from people. And oh my gosh, I was going to have to build something to compost and do it right. Because, you know, there's always do it right. And... Then I stepped back and started listening to other people and thinking, and yes, I can do that sometimes. I started thinking, I'm thinking, wait a minute, plants have been around forever. Now, of course, not all vegetable plants. Things have been modified and worked with to grow food. And, and I mean, just in a way as selective breeding as far as plants. I'm not talking about GMO. It, it can't be that hard. There's something wrong. So once Gary brought in the wood chips and he started getting the interest again and things started to change, my thoughts started changing too on how I want to do things. And as I started thinking about things, I thought, wait a minute, how does nature do it? I don't have to make compost bins and turn them and turn them and dig them up and move them and wait till they break down. Why am I waiting for my compost to break down, my leaves and my leftover food matter, when the seeds are growing in there as I'm waiting? I mean, if the seeds are growing in my compost bins, obviously I'm doing something wrong trying to break it down first. So I start doing it differently. I start doing it where I am not going to wait. I'm going to just dump it and grow. And guess what? It works. I don't need anything to turn. I don't need to wait. I don't need to do anything. Okay, then we go back to the insect problem. Well, how do you get rid of insects besides buying, you know, insecticide? Yes, you can go out there and hand pick off. And, you know, even these days, once in a while, we end up with a hornworm. But how does nature do it? You know, there's a pecking order, as they say, right? Well, it's the birds. The birds can get rid of a whole lot of your insect problems. Well, how do you bring the birds to the garden? This was the first one. Let's walk over here. It was that water fountain. On my birthday, I'm going to say three years ago? Time goes by quick. I walked into a thrift store on my birthday and he had been unloading this unit off his truck. And I said, oh my goodness, because it was a husband and wife that have the thrift store here. I said, how much do you want? And he said, oh, I can't sell it for less than, I think it was $15. I could be wrong, $15, $16, whatever. And I said, does it work? He goes, well, I plugged it in and tested it. And yeah, he did because I bought it, brought it home and didn't know the base still had water. So I had water all over my car. But that's okay. Brought it home, set it up. This changed my life. This started bringing in all kinds of birds. Now, don't get excited if you put something out there and nothing happens. And, you know, I should say don't get depressed or upset about it. Because it took time for the birds to look this thing over, see what it is, and boom, start taking baths, drinking, and coming. Well, when that worked so well, same thrift store got this monster in. And I went back and they wanted 20 bucks for it because it was just so big nobody wanted it. It's heavy. So, of course, I threw myself on it called Gary and said, you need to come down with the truck. And he, without questions, came running down and loaded it in, and there we go. It needed help. You know, I did a little paint job on it, nothing fancy, and it's not the best. It's very old, but it works. These bring in the birds. These birds are eating machines. 
And that's what you want. You want these birds. These are what are going to clean up your garden. You may have to help them out a little bit once in a while. That's true. It depends on your garden. Everybody's garden is different. But I really haven't had to for the past two years now. And I've set up water features all through here. Ones I make out of solar and then of course the electric ones. I have two electric ones going. And the rest I've got all over. I've got what? I think there's six or seven of them in my yard now. And that brings the birds, even the hummingbirds you want. Because keep in mind, the hummingbirds eat little tiny bugs. And those are the ones that you may not see and they're demolishing your garden. But these birds are eating machines. And you want these birds in the garden. They're working all day for you. For free. This is the thing. You want them in the garden. They may nibble a little bit on your greens, especially during the summer when they can't find all the little greens that they want and your greens taste better than what's growing in the summer. But you want them. So I would encourage everyone who wants to have some sort of garden, you know what, even a flower garden. You want these to come in. I've got bush tits that come in and they come in in large groups and they're all over. I mean, they're adorable little birds. They're all over and they are just looking for the aphids and anything tiny because they're tiny. Then I've got the mockingbirds that come in and I have seen them go after grasshoppers, big grasshoppers. What you see in front of me right now is a whole flock of little bush tits. And they're working the garden. Look at that. I've got broccoli back there. They're not touching my broccoli. They don't want the broccoli. They're eating any of the little bugs that I can't see. So this is what I'm reminiscing on. I'm reminiscing today on how I had really pretty much given up. I mean, I've had gardens my whole life. I've had a garden when I was a little, little girl in Los Angeles. I was trying to grow a little garden in the yard and I grew some things, carrots and radishes. I even grew corn, but that's a different story I won't get into. And no, the story is I was growing corn excited and my grandfather who didn't know, went out there, cleaned up the yard one day and cut all the tops off my corn. I can still remember crying and crying, but you know, he didn't know and I must have been like six. But regardless, I was growing stuff back then. Then here I started a garden and it was a disaster. I couldn't grow anything. I had so many insects. Maybe the soil I was using wasn't good. I mean, a lot of it I was store-bought, a lot of it was native soil. It may not have been that good, but whatever the issue was, you always had insects to deal with. Like I said, the mockingbirds have come in and they just will go after grasshoppers. So the ones that you don't spot to grab and get rid of, they'll spot them. Hornworms. I've had less than 10, I think, this year. Why? Because the Orioles have come in. They found this is a haven and they drink their water and take their baths and raise their babies and they have been wiping out all the hornworms. Now they prefer them small, but we have seen them come in and take the biggest hornworms. It's amazing. I mean, recently we knew there was a hornworm on one of the tomatoes. It got past us and past the birds. And I looked and looked and those things are hard to find sometimes. And we didn't get the black light out to check it at night. And then Gary saw it. There came mom, the Oriole, who had the babies, dived into the tomato plant. Of course, I didn't have a camera. And came out with a great big hornworm. She was so happy. So you want to bring the birds to your garden. You really, really do. Bring as many as you can. And if they eat a little bit, okay, well, you know what? You're paying them. And that's all right. So you pay them to come in and eat a little bit. That's their payment. But I'm not kidding you. I am just reminiscing on how I did not want a garden. And our insect problem, we have not used anything in the garden as far as insect, uh, you know, sprays or powders or anything. In the beginning, yeah, we had to go buy stuff because we couldn't get rid of it. It didn't work. Tried to buy the organic stuff. And it's a battle. I don't want to battle. My garden is not in a straight line, as you can see. My garden is all over the place. So 
I've got kale growing here and kale growing on the other side. I've got a tomato here and a tomato there. I've got squash here or squash there. I've got mint here and mint there, which mint doesn't really get a lot of insects anyways. But onions all over, different types of onions, different melons, different whatever, anything, different herbs all over, pepinos, whatever I want to grow. And the point is it's spread all over. So if insects come in, they're not going to follow a line in my garden and go to all the plants. I mean, you get hornworms and you got your tomatoes all in one spot. They're going to climb from one tomato plant to the other. They can't climb from one tomato plant. Here's a tomato plant. You know, they're over there as a tomato. They cannot climb from one tomato plant to the other. So I don't believe as a backyard garden gardener to have everything in a line. But again, it's your garden, so you do what you want. I try to keep things separate. I try to keep things interesting and I try to keep things fun. And it has been fun. I've had my downfalls, rabbits coming in, chewing on stuff that I don't want. and You know, things happen, but thank goodness we're dealing with plants. So we just keep on going and plant some more. But that's what I was doing today, just walking through the garden, watching all the birds come in this morning right in front of me and just nibbling away on insects this morning coming in and taking their baths coming in and drinking I love it and yes I put a little bit of food out now I am aware that when I put out food and this is something to think about you are bringing in seed eating birds when you put out seeds because that's what they're coming for if you're putting out bird seed seed eating so they will after they look around, see what's in your garden that they can eat too. So do keep aware of that. And I am aware of that. If I didn't have as much food growing in here as I've got, then I would say, okay, maybe I don't want to encourage that many seed eaters. But being that I've got so much, it doesn't matter if they eat some seeds because I'm not collecting seeds really. I collect some for myself, but I'm not, you know, collecting seed and selling seed or anything like that. So you will have to think about what you're doing. And putting seed out is bringing in seed eaters. And that's what you're, you know, like my broccoli. If it goes to seed, the seed eaters will eat that. Now, if I want to stop that, I just put some tool around and then I can save some seed. So there's always ways you can do things. But I want all the birds come in because generally even the seed eaters will eat some insects. So that's it. Just reminiscing on how things used to be and my garden was a chore and now my garden is a delight and I enjoy it and it's peaceful and that's what I really like. I like the sound of the water. I like the sound of the birds and I have a place that I can go and sit, get out of the city which is just below and be able to sit up here and enjoy nature and bring nature to my yard. I have seen some of the most unusual birds and I just love it. So I just thought I'd share that with you and share my thoughts with you and my woes. You know, like I could not grow tomato plants. It just was, it was horrible. We would go out in the middle of the night with our black light and start picking them off. Bags of them. There was no reason for that. You know, there's something that eats them, and that's what you want to do. You want to bring those workers in and tell them, hey, I'll give you water, I'll give you a little food, but you got to get rid of that for me. So you work for them, which is simply setting out some water features, and maybe a little food if you want to bring some of the seed eaters in. And in turn, they'll work for you. And guess what? They're so happy that they will have babies, and their babies will all come into your garden. And those babies are even tamer than, than the original ones that came in. Why? Because they grew up here. It's like, oh, these people belong here. These people are planting, they're feeding us. I mean, each generation is gonna be tamer and tamer. Those bush tits that just came in, you normally don't see the bush tits. They see you, they disappear. But they've got babies now that are coming in here to feed because they grew up here, so they're used to this. And that's what's really cool. So that each generation is gonna be friendlier, more accustomed to your garden if you plan on staying where you're at. And your garden doesn't have to be big. Your garden 
can be like this, which is a pretty good sized garden here, or it can be simply some container set up. This container is so full of food. Don't look at the collard. The collard is in the ground. That's growing in the ground. This container is growing so much stuff in here. Tomatoes and beans and, and purple basil and there's kale in there. There's, I don't know, there's, there's, I think there's a pepper back there in there and there's parsley and who knows what I put in there. There's a bunch of stuff. You can have some small containers in your yard, a patio, and you can still bring the birds by having a small water feature. So a garden for you doesn't have to be acreage, doesn't have to be a great big yard. It could be a small patio garden. My friend's got what he calls a courtyard. Really tiny. And to him, that's his garden. And he's got a few pots with plants growing. Everybody does it their own way. And a garden is whatever you enjoy sitting in, bringing in nature, and just having a place to just hang out and forget about the woes of what's going on in the world sometimes. Just a place you can just sit and think and hear your own thoughts. So with that, have a great day. Thanks for listening. Hope I gave some of you a little bit of an idea. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Can you believe... Where is the, where is the thing? I'm trying to see where the, ah, it's right there. Okay, now I know what I'm doing, I think. Probably not. All right, I don't even use my phone to do selfies.